Kobe Bryant, Black Mamba, 24, 8. One of the most decorated players of all time. Some would even say the GOAT. Master of the art of bucket getting. For every made basket, there's a missed shot. For every championship won, there's an excruciating playoff loss that comes with it. Every player has a loss that defines them. Jordan had the Pistons. LeBron had the Mavericks. Even Magic had the Celtics. But just take a second. Close your eyes for me. What loss comes to mind when you think of Kobe? Is it the 08 Finals, Game 6, Boston? 04 Finals, Game 5, Detroit? Well, for us, it's Game 7. 06 against the Phoenix Suns. Welcome back, everyone, to US Airways Arena for Game 7 between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Phoenix Suns. Right now, let's go to PA announcer Jeff Scott for tonight's... But before me and Max get into it, I just want to remind you guys, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. Turn on post notifications for any time we drop a banger like this one. And I'm going to kick it to Max. The 05-06 NBA season was a turbulent one for the Lakers. Gone was Shaq, and with him, any championship aspirations. Yet, for the 19,000 fans at Staples Center and the Laker faithful watching from home, there was optimism. Everyone was tuning in to watch the Kobe show. For two and a half hours, Kobe would dazzle Laker fans by performing feats of volume scoring, masterful footwork, and difficult shot making. And then Kobe with a tough shot, throwing his legs out there, maybe opening up in the game. Kobe held up. Now he's shooting, he will at the shot clock, got it away. Got it! He does, does it again. I can't believe this guy tonight. And what was his reward for entertaining the masses? Getting to play the second seed, Phoenix Suns, and the reigning two-time MVP, Steve Nash. The seven-seed Lakers had gone one and three against the Suns during the year and had struggled with Phoenix's uncommon for the time small ball lineup. Despite this, Laker fans, ourselves included, believed in Lakers and Kobe. We even hoped that everyone who voted Nash over Kobe for MVP would have to eat crow. Just look at the numbers. The series got off to a perfect start for the Lakers as they jumped off to a commanding 3-1 lead. Kobe even provided one of the most poetic moments in recent NBA history by dunking all over Steve Nash. But he shitted on him. Yeah, he shitted all on his hood. Yeah. Two feet, one hand. He's like Steve Nash was, was sucking balls on that play. <laughs> the Suns, however, showed resilience as they won the next two games in the series, even without lockdown defender Raja Bell, who would clothesline Kobe in game five, and Tim Thomas, who slowly pump faked his way to becoming a painful memory for Laker fans. With this, the series was tied 3-3 and the series returned to Phoenix and legacies were on the line. Kobe was in a unique position. By pushing Shaq out of LA, he had sealed his fate in a sense. He would never have his whole legacy tied to one person, unlike Jordan to Pippen, Magic to Kareem. All the success was his to have, but the blame was solely on Kobe. In Phoenix, in front of an energy-laden crowd, the Lakers got off to a slow start. Kobe was letting the game come to him, trying to get his team going and picking his spots to attack. By the end of the first quarter, the Lakers were down by 17 points. However, in the second, Kobe started showing signs of life. He was attacking the basket, pulling up for jump shots. He scored 18 points in the second quarter, keeping the Lakers afloat. Coming out of halftime, when the Lakers needed him most though, he vanished. A man known for his unrelenting determination just gave up. This is the man who scored 81 points in a game, who outscored Dallas through three quarters by himself. He quit. Witnessing it 15 years ago, and even rewatching it now, it doesn't seem real. Kobe only took three shots the second half. Three shots. He only scored one point in the second half, and that was on a free throw because of a defensive three second penalty. Yeah, there were games he took less shots in the series, but come on, it's game seven. After watching his team flower in the first half, you have to take over right here. Game sevens are made for superstars. And Kobe wasn't even looking to score. He was content watching his team fail. Passive is an understatement. 
he barely looked at the basket. He was residing to watching ill-fated post-ups by Kwame Brown. You can look at his body language, his interactions with the coaching staffs, or even teammates during timeouts. He was checked out of the game. Without him scoring in the second half, the Lakers folded and were run off the court. They made the history books by becoming a member of the 13 teams that have blown a 3-1 lead in the playoffs. It was a letdown. Laker fans were pissed and the media couldn't wait to call out Kobe. Immediately after the game on Inside the NBA, Charles Barkley voices his pleasures with Kobe's performance. Kobe would call Charles after the game, cussing him out and calling him every name in the book to defend himself. And it all culminated when Kobe came onto Inside the NBA to defend his actions during Game 7. Well, you know what? I says I criticized Kobe in Game 7. Uh, he didn't like it. He let me know it. I think I probably made one mistake taking it public, but I wanted to get his side, his point of view. I have no problem with him disagreeing with me. I think I did make a mistake making that public because he, he, he didn't take it public, I did. But I thought what he, I didn't like the way he played in game seven because I didn't think he was aggressive. I, I understand why he didn't like it, me calling him out on national television. He let me know it. And to me, that should have been the end of it. But it's Kobe's naysayers salivated at the blown lead, questioning his heart, moral fiber, and pointing to Shaq's championship during the year as Kobe needing Shaq. Imagine being in the shadow of someone larger than life and trying to accomplish the insurmountable feat of escaping it, but failing while that person achieves ultimate glory. Us being from LA, let us see firsthand how divided Laker fans were. Were you team Shaq or were you team Kobe? There was no middle ground. Us, as Kobe fans, talked about how Kobe playing with Kwame Brown and Spush Parker was a big excuse. Then he had on the other side. Shaq got it done without him. Hearing this had to cut Kobe to his core. But this is what made him who he was. This loss was serve as one of the driving motivations that would lead him to his next two championships. Phoenix will remain a painful place for Kobe and the Lakers over the next couple years. Losing to Phoenix in the next year in the playoffs, but Kobe would have the last laugh by defeating the Suns in the 2010 Western Conference Finals en route to his fifth championship. Kobe was obsessive in his pursuit of basketball perfection, daring to achieve the impossible. Kobe changed, not just his number eight to 24, but he got closer and closer to achieve perfection. To improve is to change. To be perfect is to change often. And while Kobe failed his pursuit of perfection, he achieved excellence.